appears to be a probe, Captain. From an intelligence unknown to us. Continue transmitting universal peace and hello in all known languages. Get me Starfleet Command. Ready, Captain. Starfleet Command, this is USS Saratoga patrolling Sector 5, neutral zone. We're tracking a probe of unknown origin on apparent trajectory to the Terran solar system. Attempts to communicate with the probe have been negative on all known frequencies. Continue tracking Saratoga. We will analyze transmissions and advise. Roger, Starfleet. Saratoga out. Captain's log, star date 8390. We're in the third month of our Vulcan exile, and it was Dr. McCoy with a fine sense of historical irony who decided on a name for our captured Klingon vessel. Dr. McCoy? Aye, sir. Mr. Scott? Aye, sir. Uhura? Aye, sir. Checo? Aye, sir. Sulu? Aye, sir. Let the record show that the commander and the crew of the late Starship Enterprise have voted unanimously to return to Earth to face the consequences of their actions in the rescue of their comrade, Captain Spock. Thank you all. Repair stations, please. Mr. Scott. Aye, sir. How soon can we be underway? Well, give me one more day, sir. Damage control is easy. Bleeding Klingon, that's hard. Status report, I want. Not good, Mr. President. It's using forms All of energy our best scientists crew. do not understand. Can you protect us? We're launching everything we have. Permission to come aboard. Permission granted. I must apologize for my attire. I seem to have misplaced my uniform. Mr. Sulu, take us home. Trust is functional. One quarter impulse power. Six hours present speed. Continue on course. Mr. Chekhov and the Santa Federation escort. No, sir. There are no Federation vessels on the assigned patrol stations. I'm receiving a number of distress calls. the estimate cloud cover of the planet at this time? 78.6%. Notify all stations. Starfleet emergency. Red alert. Red alert. Mr. President, even with planetary reserves, we cannot survive without the sun. I'm well aware of that, Admiral. Admiral? What is it? Overlapping distress calls, and now a message coming in from the Federation. On screen. This is the President of the United Federation. Do not approach Earth. The transmissions of an orbiting probe are causing critical damage to this planet. It has almost totally ionized our atmosphere. All power sources have failed. All Earth orbiting starships are powerless. The probe is vaporizing our oceans. We cannot survive unless a way can be found to respond to the probe. Further communications may not be possible. Save your energy. Save yourselves. Avoid the planet Earth at all costs. You let us hear the probe's transmission. Yes, sir. On speakers. 
Spock, what do you make of that? Most unusual. An unknown form of energy of great power and intelligence. Evidently unaware that its transmissions are destructive. I find it illogical that its intentions should be hostile. Really? You think this is its way of saying hi there to the people of the Earth? There are other forms of intelligence on Earth, Doctor. Only human arrogance would assume the message must be meant for man. You're suggesting the transmission is meant for a life form other than man? At least a possibility, Admiral. The President did say it was directed at Earth's oceans. Uhura, can you modify the probe signals accounting for density and temperature and salinity factors? And try, sir. I think I have it, sir. And this is what it would sound like underwater? Yes, sir. If my suspicion is correct, there can be no response to this message. Excuse me. Where are you going? To test my theory. As suspected, the probe's transmissions are the songs sung by whales. Whales? Specifically, humpback whales. They've been extinct since the 21st century. It is possible that an alien intelligence sent the probe to determine why they lost contact. My God. Spot, could the humpback's answer to this call be simulated? The sounds, but not the language. We would be responding in gibberish. Does the species exist on any other planet? Negative. Humpbacks were indigenous to Earth. Earth of the past. Well, we could attempt to find some humpback whales. You just said there aren't any, except on Earth of the past. Yes, Dodger. That is exactly what I said. Start your computations for time warp. Scotty, how long is this bay? Oh, about 60 feet, Admiral. Can you enclose it to hold water? I suppose I could. You're planning to take a swim? We've got to find some humpbacks. Humpbacked people? Whales, Mr. Scott. Whales. You're really going to try time travel in this rust bucket? We've done it before. Sure, slingshot around the sun, pick up enough speed, you're in time warp. If you don't, you're fried. You're proposing that we go backwards in time, find humpback whales, then bring them forward in time, drop them off, and hope to hell they tell this probe what to go do with this cell. That's a general idea. Well, that's crazy. Computations, Mr. Spock? In progress, Admiral. Uhura, get me through to Starfleet Command. Red alert. I'm picking up a faint transmission. Red alert. I think it's Admiral Kirk calling. On screen. That only the extinct species, humpback whale, can give a proper response to the probe. We're going to attempt time travel. We are computing our trajectory at this time. This time. This time. This time. This time. Get him back! Get him back! Ready to engage computer, Admiral. What's our target in time? Late 20th century. Can you be more specific? Not with this equipment. I've had to program some of the variables from memory. What are some of the variables? Availability of fuel components, mass of the vessel through a time continuum, and probable location of humpback whales, in this case, the Pacific Basin. Engage computers. Prepare for warp speed. Shields, Mr. Chekhov. Shields, aye. Warp speed, Mr. Zulu. Warp two. Warp three. Steady as she goes. Warp five. Thank <laughs> you.
Sir, the breaking thrusters have fired. Earth. But when, Spock? Judging by the pollution content of the atmosphere, I believe we have arrived at the latter half of the 20th century. Well done, Spock. Admiral, if I may, we are probably already visible to the tracking devices of the time. Quite right, Mr. Spock. Engage cloaking device, Mr. Tegger. Admiral, I am receiving whale song. Admiral, this is strange. The song is directly ahead. It's coming from San Francisco. From the city? That doesn't make sense. Admiral, we have a serious problem. Would you please come down? It's these Kraylon crystals, Admiral. The time travel drained them. Well, they're giving out, recrystallizing. Give me your own figure, Mr. Scott. Oh, 24 hours, give or take, staying cloaked. After that, Admiral, we're visible and dead in the water. In any case, we won't have enough to break out of Earth's gravity, to say nothing about getting home. I can't believe we've come this far only to be stopped by this. Is there no way of recrystallizing the dimension? There may be a 20th century possibility. If memory serves, there was a dubious flirtation with nuclear fission reactors, resulting in toxic side effects. We may be able to find some. We could construct a device to collect their high-energy photons safely. These photons could then be injected into the dilithium chamber, causing crystalline restructure. Theoretically. Where would we find these reactors, theoretically? Nuclear power was widely used in naval vessels. San Francisco. I was born there. It doesn't look all that different. Set us down in Golden Gate Park. Aye, sir. Descending. We'll divide into teams. Commanders Uhura and Chekhov will assign the uranium problem. Yes, sir. Dr. McCoy, you, Mr. Scott, and Commander Sulu will convert us a whale tank. While Captain Spock and I attempt to trace these whale songs to their source. I want you all to be very careful. This is terra incognita. Many of their customs will doubtless take us by surprise. It's a foregone conclusion. None of these people have ever seen an extraterrestrial before. This is an extremely primitive and paranoid culture. Chekhov will issue a phaser and a communicator to each team. We'll maintain radio silence except in emergencies. Those of you in uniform, remove your rank insignia. Any questions? All right. Let's do our job and get out of here. Our own world is waiting for us to save it, if we can. Commence landing procedure. Aye, sir. Bearing to the whales? 283 degrees, 15.2 kilometers. Everybody remember where we parked. <laughs> 